Hey guys, today's um, tutorial is on VO2 max. So what is VO2 max? VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen that can be taken up, transported and utilized each minute. So it's basically how much oxygen the body can use or possibly use each minute. And that includes um, factors such as being able to breathe it in, being able to carry it, and then of course the muscles actually being able to use it. So it's not just about being at the muscular level, it's also talking about other functions that help deliver the oxygen to those muscles. Um, it also represents how much oxygen the body actually utilizes, um, and it's in a strong indicator of aerobic fitness. So, for example, if you've got um, aerobic athletes, so those who do marathons, uh, cross-country skiing, any endurance events, they will most likely do a VO2 max test to test their aerobic endurance. It's one of um, the best indicators that they can use to see whether they're improving or not. It's usually measured uh, relatively, so that means um, you measure it in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute, and so that accounts for the different sizes in athletes. So if you had a very, very muscular person, um, and then a not so muscular person, obviously the muscular person would use more oxygen because there's more muscles for that oxygen to go to. So um, you can't really measure oxygen just depending, like just relative to each other. It has to be per kilogram of body weight and that makes it a lot more equal. Okay, so factors that affect VO2 max are gender, genetics, age and training status and we'll have a look at each of them in a bit more detail. So gender, um, females typically have a lower muscle mass um, just because of genetics. So um, therefore, if there's less muscle mass, they're going to take up less oxygen, so their VO2 max will be less than males, generally. Um, it really depends, though, um, on training and that sort of thing, but we'll get to that later. Um, females also usually have lower levels of red blood cells and hemoglobin. That means their capacity to actually carry the oxygen is lower, um, and therefore, again, affecting the VO2 max. And females typically have smaller lung volumes and heart sizes. Now, um, we're not being sexist when we're saying this. It's just shown through studies that females generally are small, smaller than males. And that just comes through down biology. So if you have a smaller lung volume, um, you're less likely to absorb that oxygen into your bloodstream. And the heart size, if that's smaller, then obviously you can pump less around. Again, affecting the VO2 max and making it lower. Um, the genetics, that definitely impacts on your VO2 max if your parents um, or your family heritage has a history of higher VO2 max, if you actually got it tested, then you are more likely to have a higher VO2 max too. But it also comes down to the fact that um, if in your family history you had um, people that had a higher lung volume, people that had um, bigger hearts, bigger body mass, that sort of thing. Genetics all plays a part in that and therefore your VO2 max can be higher just because of their physiology. Alright, so age is also a factor. Um, VO2 max actually peaks during late adolescence or early adulthood, so around 20, and then it actually starts to decline. So um, once you have athletes, say, getting into their 30s, they're going to struggle um, in endurance events compared to those in their 20s because their VO2 max has declined, whereas those in the 20s, they're peaking. So um, to actually combat that, the um, older athletes will have to train heavier, um, but it can still combat the VO2 max. So uh, although they're... Um, competing against younger people, if they put in enough training, they can actually overcome that barrier. And then training status is the last one. Um, if you engage in intense aerobic training, that will definitely improve your VO2 max dramatically. Um, if you have a look there on the screen, you've got a regularly active um, individual, so a male, and his VO2 max might be around 51 mils per kilogram per minute. And then if you compare that to someone who's done a lot of intense aerobic training, um, for example, an elite cross-country skiing athlete, they're considered to be the one of the fittest 
types of athlete in the world in terms of aerobic endurance, um, their VO2 max can be about 83 mils per kilogram per minute. I think um, records have shown that the highest VO2 max ever recorded was 94 mils per kilogram per minute. Um, and that's that's pretty impressive. So we'll have a look here now. You've got a graph to actually show you trained versus untrained athletes in running. And you see there there's a blue line and a red line. So first of all, to actually know when VO2 max has been reached, you look out for a plateau. So a plateau is a leveling off. Um, so when the graph um, starts to not rise anymore, that's when VO2 max has been reached because it's showing that no more oxygen is being taken up. So um, on the left hand side of the axes there it says oxygen uptake. So if that's leveling off, clearly you're not taking in anymore because you can't. So that's your VO2 max. It's the maximum amount that you can take up. Now on the red line there is an untrained athlete and their VO2, their VO2 max is quite low, um, it's around 30 on the graph. Then if you compare that to the trained individual, uh, theirs is just below 60, so it's almost double. Um, so you can see what training actually does, uh, you can't leave it up just to genetics and age, um, training definitely has an enormous impact. So just in summary, VO2 max is the point at which the body can't take up any more oxygen. Um, it's limited by gender, genetics, age, and training. And al always when you're looking at a graph of VO2 max, you're always looking for the plateau, and that's the point at which the VO2 max has been reached. Thanks for watching.